service to another, to somebody who wouldn't otherwise know, um, helps you to understand yourself, and most importantly, it gives you a sense of agency. You've spoken so passionately about the importance of service. Why do you think service is so critical? There are really a hundred different ways of addressing that question of why is service important. So one, one way is simply to say it's, for me, part of the essential core of Judaism. Among the mitzvah that we're supposed to observe is the one that everyone will tell you is the one most repeated in the Torah, which is take care of the other and the stranger. So first of all, service gives you a very different sense of yourself. If you go through life enjoying much of what comes to you, suffering some of the less good days like a pandemic, dealing with other crises, you don't have as full a sense of yourself, who you are and who you are in relation to other people, unless you're actually relational. So some, some service, with quotes, is really just in your own family, what you do for other people, what they do for you. But service to another, to somebody who wouldn't otherwise know, um, helps you to understand yourself, and most importantly, it gives you a sense of agency, oh, and especially for young people. Second big element is perhaps where most people start, and that is it does something for somebody. The reason to do service is because people need help. They need chicken soup, they need um, shelter, they need tutoring, um, they need physical labor done that they can't do themselves, and you're contributing to it. You're filling a social need. Third reason is the one that more people are speaking to these days, and that is it puts you in touch and in contact with people you might not otherwise know. Now, that depends. Obviously, if your cousin falls on hard times and your family decides to take in that family, that, that's somebody you already know. But if you volunteer at the Jewish Community Center, uh, which is where we're taping this, um, and you volunteer for their literacy program, and you agree to tutor the same child once a week for an hour for a whole year, you're learning a piece of the world that you wouldn't otherwise know. And we live in a very complicated world, one that we can clearly all see is getting more and more complicated. And most of us, to some degree, live in our own bubble. And in the Jewish community, not only in the Jewish community, but in the Jewish community, many people's bubble, bubble is, I would call, a bubble of privilege. So they don't know that many poor people. They no longer know the family who as it were, just got off the boat, although there are thousands of families every day just getting off the boat into America. Um, but they're not the people who are going to move next door to you. For me, the last reason to do service is in some ways the most important, and that is if you do service and, it's going to be a little tough here, you don't end up thinking that you are the Messiah and that everybody that you help is being helped and that's the way the world should be. So if you do service in the way that most people do service, you will come home, and I literally mean that, at the end of a few days and say, I had no idea. Why is the world the way it is? So when I talk to young people, which I guess is what I'm doing on this tape, I say that there are lots of Torah teachings that I'd like to share, but when you go out in the world, the most important text that I want you to take with you is the word why, W-H-Y. Why are things the way they are? Why was the water in Flint, Michigan poisoning children? And in that case, it's because some bureaucrats made a decision to switch the water source without testing it because it was cheaper. It's not always that clear. So for me, the reason I want more and more young people to take the obligation to do service is because it will help you, I hope, ask the question why, ferret out the answers, not always as easy as the ones I just offered, and then figure out what you're going to do about it.
because hundreds of thousands of young Jews signing up with Repair the World, participating in summer service programs, virtual service programs, year long, they will make a huge difference to the people they're helping. They will get a new sense of themselves, but they won't solve the problems. They'll solve it for that person, which is not unimportant. But I want the people who are in this program, who are doing service, to be the people who organize for social change, who lobby their legislators, who think about running for office, and who commit themselves to creating a society that has a much greater degree of justice and equity. So you mentioned earlier about the importance of Torah in your conception of justice and service. How have your Jewish values shaped your work in social justice? So the answer is totally, but I always say that carefully because I think I want to make it clear, you can be, first of all, you can be not Jewish, and second of all, you can be Jewish and not be immersed in Torah um, and go and do good in the world and come up with many of the same principles that I did and decided something people should do. And certainly in the faith-based universe, all faiths teach go and, and be and do. I don't think they all have exactly the same philosophy that I'm putting forward, but nevertheless, I respect what they're doing. That said, this came to me through my Judaism. So somewhat diffusely through my family. I was just raised in a family which the general message, before we get to Torah, this, the general message was this country was good to us, the city was good to us, and it's our obligation to give something back. And my family, my mother and my father and my maternal grandparents all were on boards of directors of major Jewish agencies in New York City. So their notion was we can give some of our money, but we're not hugely wealthy, but we can give time and we can give wisdom to figuring out how the Jewish community should take care of the elderly or how the Jewish community should work with foster children. So I had a sense of this as a Jewish thing to do. And by the time I got into adult life, and particularly into politics, I adopted a, a slogan of, of Heschel's, which so is not Torah, it's modern Torah, but Heschel said, in a free society where terrible wrongs exist, some are guilty, but all are responsible. And as someone who at that point in my life was um, doing what's generally described as 1960s and anti-war work, it was like, okay, I didn't cause these problems. This is mistakes in US foreign policy, it's mistakes in US um, corporate capitalism, but the consequences are right here and it's my responsibility to do something about it. And I use that mantra throughout government. So for me, it's a Jewish thing to do. For other people, it's a Christian thing to do, or it's just the thing to do, or it's a humanitarian thing to do. I get that. But if you're Jewish and interested in doing this work, you're part of a faith and a tradition that's been talking about being there for the other for thousands of years. At this moment in our country, there's a larger conversation happening about justice of all kinds. Where do you see the intersection of service and justice? For me, the justice that we're talking about, justice and equity in the society, involves advocacy. And so there the connection is clear. And I want to point out, I try not to do too much Torah in these presentations, but it does say tzedek tzedek tirdof. And the English translation is justice, justice, you shall pursue. So I want to make two comments about that. One is pursue, not a word that we use except when we're, I don't know, chasing somebody else on a bike. Uh, but it doesn't say justice you shall enjoy. It doesn't say justice, it doesn't even say justice you shall create. It says you shall pursue it, which means that it might not be realizable in our lifetimes, but you're supposed to be on the road. You're supposed to be doing what Dr. King called bending the moral arc of the universe toward justice. And I want to make another point, and that is that some of the sages ask, since our sages always ask questions, why does it say justice twice? Is it just for emphasis? And that one of the answers is no, it says justice twice because justice has to not only be your end goal, but it has to be the means by which you do the work. So this notion of organizing, this notion of working literally side by side with the most affected people, not going in and deciding what they need, and then going back to Washington and announcing it. And that the best way to do advocacy, and this is true right here in the States, is not, with great respect, not for repair the world to put together its, I'll pick a city, Pittsburgh cohort 
to fight for X, but the people in its Pittsburgh cohort to go organize the people that they're working with and, and agree what we most need to do is change this law at the state level or at the national level, and we're much bigger in number and much more impactful if we can all lobby together. It's easy to feel overwhelmed at the idea of fixing the world with tikkun olam. What message do you have for young people who want to make a difference? You will all be able to make a difference. Don't let anybody tell you no. I do urge people, pick an issue you know you're passionate about. Because these changes take a long, long time. You want to work on fighting racism in your community. It's going to take a long time. And so you need to find allies. You can't do it alone. But um, I would urge you, pick an issue you're passionate about so that it will be a little bit easier to help mobilize other people to work with you and then a little bit easier to stick to it over time. So that's, that's one big message. Second big message is don't, don't forget to do it. Try to always be leaving some space for what can I do to work to make change. Then I would add to that, given that you and I are taping this at the in September of 2020, I want to say what John Lewis would say if he was still alive, which is voting is not just a right, it's a responsibility. Democracy is not a spectator sport. I expect everyone watching this video to vote in every election. It's certainly the most critical election in my lifetime, and I think it's the most critical election in the history of the United States. But there still is a huge amount of work to do on these issues of race, the environment, immigration, America's role in the world, our capacity to rebuild our health system and um, meet the needs of our people. And that will only happen if there are a large number of people mobilizing and organizing, doing advocacy. And that will happen most easily among people who've gone out and done service and gotten a sense of their own agency and a sense of what it means to be without, um, and an understanding that almost all of these problems are systemic and structural, and they need to be attacked at the government level. Why is now the time to serve the moment? So I mean, this is a really bad moment, and, and racism has been um, is in built into this country for 400 years. But that, that makes it, the fact that it's now exposed in some new ways, whether you see that in the statistics around COVID-19 or in the unbelievably disgusting issues of incidents, I'm sorry, of racial violence, is visible now. So now is a time when there are problems that are exposed, when more people get that it's, that it's real. So it's a very important time to go out and try to, to work on it. I quoted Rabbi Heschel before that in a free society where terrible wrongs exist, some are guilty but all are responsible. Rabbi Heschel's last public program, which was on national television, he was interviewed and at the end of the program the interviewer said, you asked me at the beginning of the program to be sure to ask you what advice you had for young people. So now I'm asking you what advice do you have for young people? I am paraphrasing, but Rabbi Heschel said, let them know that every deed counts and every word matters. But above all, let them know and understand to build their lives as if they were works of art. So build your lives as if they were works of art. Do what John Lewis said, go out there and make good and necessary trouble and make a difference for justice and equity.